So I was just scouring the internet the other day and I saw on my YouTube homepage a video titled When Call of Duty Took Itself Seriously. And I thought, well, assuming that's about the campaign and multiplayer, and we all know the time when that happened when we started getting pink glowing operators in multiplayer and campaigns went from having realistic World War II settings to taking us into outer space. But I thought, well, the exact same question could be asked for zombies. When did this mode, because it did, stop taking itself Seriously. Now, there's another question that comes along with this. Because it's a zombies mode, it's not like a regular COD campaign which is based on a realistic setting. This is zombies. It is unrealistic. Zombies, in a way, aren't serious. So, there's that. But I think there definitely was a time when zombies was more sincere and earnest. There was a point in time when it changed and became more light-hearted. I think everybody would agree, and this would have to be the case, that World at War Zombies, Black Ops 1, and probably Black Ops 2 as well, because those first three Zombies games followed a similar style in my opinion in terms of theming, atmosphere, each map is different, I would call Kino de Toten dark and grungy, taking place in an abandoned theatre, whereas the map after, Shangri-La, was quite bright in terms of it being in a jungle with an orange colour tone in the Himalayas. We also had Moon on Black Ops 1, which was very different to the rest. Black Ops 2 had Transit, Die Rise, Mob of the Dead, Buried, Origins, you could say Origins is different compared to all of those other BO2 maps, with its three giant robots roaming the map. For what we'd seen during that time, that was quite unrealistic. We were just used to small enemies about the same height or a little bit bigger than us, but not these three robots wandering around powered by Element 115. It was almost magical, but I still think BO1 and BO2 zombies, for the most part, felt like they took place in our world, like it could be a part of reality, and I think World at War is the best example because its maps were so simple. Nacht, Verrucht, Shinonuma, and Doris actually felt like it could happen, taking place in abandoned facilities or airfields where zombie outbreaks had occurred. There was nothing on those maps where you looked and said, okay, that wouldn't really happen if a zombie outbreak did ever occur, that seems a little bit too far-fetched. But you can tell Troyok took World at War zombies seriously, and they also tried to keep Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2 zombies serious. The maps don't look anything out of the ordinary, they are what you would see in real life, and some of them include real-life locations or objects such as the flytrap we see in Darice. The characters we played as were realistic and believable, and the way they dressed, they looked the part. Marines in Nacht and Verrucht, the Ultimus characters Richtofen, and Takio, Nikolai and Dempsey in a lot of the other maps, Richtofen was a scientist who assisted in creating the undead. Takio, Nikolai and Dempsey were soldiers. But the main thing that kept zombies feeling like a serious mode, because you could argue for a very long time the maps were revolved around it, was the storyline. Once upon a time before creation, an ancient race existed called the Keepers. Along with them were two beings who were called Dr. Monty and the Shadow Man. Some of these Keepers eventually became corrupted by something known as the Dark Ether, in which they then turned into the Apothecans. Okay, right now doesn't sound too realistic, but this part of the story wasn't known during World at War BO1 and BO2. However, what we did know is, a long time after, they sent meteors of Element 115 to Earth, and it was because of this element an organisation called Group 935 was formed. Dr. Maxis, who was the leader, wanted to advance and improve the human race. He invited his friend, Dr. Edward Richtofen, to join. Together, the two experimented with Element 115. They used it to create methods of teleportation, but eventually they joined forces with the Nazis and said to them, look, in return, you give us funding to do our experiments and we'll give you an undead army. So, using Element 115, Group 935 created the undead. But as we know, soon after things started to go wrong, Richtofen himself became corrupted by the Dark Ether. His mission then turned to destroying Maxis and getting rid of him, along with his daughter Samantha. In the end, that's exactly what he did. Trapped Maxis and his daughter inside of a teleporter and sent them away, where Samantha was sent to the moon, got inside of the MPD pyramid, which was a device put on the moon by the Keepers a long time before that, which gave her control of the undead. There's a lot more to it, but when I put it like that, Okay, it doesn't sound super serious, but it felt like it. At least as much as a zombies mode could do. There was some fantasy in there, but for the most part, a group experimenting with some space meteors, which is used to create zombies and then everything goes wrong and an undead outbreak spreads. Black Ops 1 Zombies continued this story, making it a little bit crazier, but still. I would say it was in Black Ops 2, especially towards the end, Buried and Origins, is when you started to notice a shift in the story but everything else it felt like the developers didn't change too much until black ops 3. now if you look at bo3 zombies compared to world at war bo1 and 2 just visually you notice a massive difference because the maps went from being 
dark and grungy, and a lot of them taking place in abandoned facilities. We went from that to zombie maps taking place in more random locations. The first map on disc was Shadows of Evil, which was in a city, but an alternate reality of it, where the plants grew 10 times higher. Not only did we have zombies now, but we had these alien looking creatures, which we know are the Apothecans, but there was the Margua with its tentacles and its three heads, the meatballs, the parasites, which were these flying bugs. When people saw all of these creatures and craziness in Shadows of Evil for the first time, I remember everybody saying, wait, aliens and zombies now? Even though we'd had giant robots and Brutus, space monkeys, these weird tentacle creatures was taking it to the next level, and for a long time, because the Apothecans returned in every BO3 map after this, in Derizon Draco we had the Corrupted Keepers, the map after that, Zetsubo Nishima, we had giant spiders and trees walking around, in Garad Karovi we had dragons and revelations, a humongous flying monster, going from just zombies and the occasional zombified dog or monkey to now what looked like aliens. You could see the shift in zombies going from serious to fantasy. The maps were more out there and what didn't help with this was the upgrade in technology. With Black Ops 3 releasing on the new generation of consoles at that time, that meant that Treyarch could do so much more. If you look at World at War, Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2's maps, they look relatively similar in terms of how simple they are. And what comes along with that is, well, if you can't add too much into it, then at least the basics stay the same. Whereas in BO3, they were able to add a lot more, and they did. They no longer had to keep zombies simple, they could now experiment with it, include everything they wanted. So the maps became crazier, the enemies became crazier, and so did the storyline. It went from believable to, well, definitely not believable. I'm not even going to begin to try and tell it because it's crazy. I do have an hour-long full storyline video on it, from World at War to Black Ops 4, so if anyone hasn't seen it, I will leave the link to it down in the description. But the storyline in BO3 definitely wasn't serious, however I will say it's actually my favourite. To me it's the most interesting. Maybe that wasn't for everyone, but being a person that loves fantasy, yes even though I love the simpler, more serious story from World at War to BO2, when they started to include fantasy into the story in BO3, I personally love that. But since we're just talking about when zombies shifted from being a serious mode to an unserious one, well, I think it was definitely Black Ops 3. And a lot of people didn't like it. They got used to it over time because Black Ops 4 continued this. But there was another game that is relevant to this video, which is Cold War Zombies, which replaced our main sets of characters that we played as with operators. Personally, I think microtransactions has contributed to ruining Call of Duty. Being able to play as any character that you want to in Zombies instead of who you were forced to play as by Treyarch, from a story point of view, perhaps not gameplay, really took away the immersion. Actually, there are two points I can make here. One, playing as operators in Zombies meant that you no longer really cared about what happened to the character that you were playing as. Because they didn't have a permanent role in the storyline, you could play as a different character each map. Whereas in the older days, you could play as one set of characters for one, two or three games, which gave you a long time to get to know them, to get invested into them. But then when operators were introduced in Cold War, well it's impossible to care about the characters that you're playing as because they're not actually a set part of the story anymore. One of the most laughable things for me was when you could play as Samantha Maxis in Firebase C. If you pick her as your operator and then you complete the main easter egg, in the ending cutscene you actually see two Samanthas on the map because you're actually able to play as her as an operator. But because she's also a character in the cutscene, you see two Samanthas at once, which totally takes away any immersion, any realism and seriousness for the story. You can also play as Weaver in D-Machine, Firebase C, Maldetoten, which, come on, again, story-wise, we all know he was not actually there because of his position in Requiem, so playing as operators, especially important operators such as Maxis and Weaver, took away a lot of the seriousness from the storyline, but when you include microtransactions, which allowed you to buy crazy operators, which looked like this, and these, in my opinion, are the more toned-down ones, there's operators with flashing lights on them, multicolors, bunny ears, and you're allowed to play as them in zombies and see them in cutscenes. How are you meant to take a mode seriously that went from playing as serious characters, soldiers and marines, to furries? Like, come on. Is it fun? Probably. Not that I buy skins in Call of Duty anyway, but I think it was also the downfall of COD zombies. Cold War did other things to bring the serious tone back. I think the maps were a lot more realistic than ones we saw in BO4 and 3, but the introduction of operators countered that. So it's undeniable that zombies went from a serious mode to one that the developers not didn't care about as much, but well, 
one that they took less seriously, and it's there for everyone to see. That doesn't necessarily mean it's less enjoyable. I suppose it depends what you want. So there we go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, hopefully you've enjoyed the video today. If you have, drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest content on the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.